Hey, what's up everyone, I'm Tom. So what is heart rate variability all about? Over the last year and a half or so, I've had the fun experience of testing out a bunch of different sleep trackers. Some have been awesome, some have been a little bit of work, some have been just downright weird. Most are great at tracking with, I would say, a pretty high degree of accuracy, some basic insights into your heart rate, your respiratory rate, how long you slept, and then how long you were in each sleep stage. But most of them also track our heart rate variability, or HRV. And I'll admit, when I first encountered this number in some of the apps, I had no idea what it was or what it was even tracking. So I started testing some of these products and I started talking to some of these brands and I made sure to ask them what this number was all about. Of course, I was hoping it would be a quick and easy answer, something objective. Like if I asked you what's a good blood pressure or what's a healthy resting heart rate, we all kind of have a sense for what a healthy number is there, kind of where we should be. But with HRV, well, that was a lot more difficult. Everyone I talked to kept telling me, this is a highly personal number. Your HRV should always be benchmarking it against yourself. It's a very personal metric. In fact, to highlight just how crazy and personal this number is, I asked a bunch of people around the office to give me their HRV data, and it was all over the place. <laughs> how can someone with an HRV of 120 and someone with an HRV of 50 reasonably say which is better or who is healthier? Trying to understand how to interpret this number was breaking my brain a little bit. So in all of my confusion, I decided to speak to a couple of experts about this. And I started with Marco Altini, who has a PhD in data science, a master's in human movement sciences. He is also, among other things, an advisor for the sleep and wellness tracker, Aura. And I started by asking Marco, what are we tracking when we track HRV? Let's say that in technical terms, we look at the variability between heartbeats because the heart is not beating constantly. So even if we have 60 beats per minute, it's not one exactly every second. There is always some variability in there. So at a real base level, our hearts have this variability in how they beat. For example, it's not an even one beat per second. So HRV measures that space between your heartbeats. Any deviation in that is recorded in milliseconds. So if you look at the data from my sleep tracker and you see, for example, an HRV of 106, that means that on average, my heart rate varies 106 milliseconds between beats. So cool data. That metric makes sense, I understand it, but what exactly does it mean? What exactly are we measuring? That has to do with basically just the stress response. So as we experience stressors, do we have a response in the body through the autonomic nervous system, which impacts heart rhythm. So when we measure HRV, we're not necessarily measuring the variability of our heart rate. I mean, we are, of course, but more so the variability of our heart rate is a sign of something deeper. So as Marco said, our heart rate is directly tied to our autonomic nervous system. Now this is the system that governs things we don't consciously control. So think here about things like our blood pressure, our respiratory rate, our heart rates. Your autonomic nervous system is the pilot of all of these processes. And we can get a really good indication of what's going on within that system by paying attention to our HRV. So are we stressed? Are we excited? Are we well rested? Maybe we're just really, really tired. Is our body ready for the stress of a workout? Or do we need a day to rest? All of those things get reflected in our autonomic nervous system, which then gets reflected in our HRV. The interesting thing, which is also sometimes the confusing thing, is that pretty much anything impacts HRV because it's just a proxy to autonomic nervous system activity. Now, our nervous system has two branches to it, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. That parasympathetic side is what regulates our body when it's at rest. But a sympathetic activity will be higher when we are more rested, for example, or recalling. So that's what we can say we are looking at is really more the influence of the parasympathetic system. So as Marco said, when we measure our HRV, we're getting a sense for how our body is working to regulate itself when we're resting. So in other words, it's this holistic number that kind of tells us more about our body's state than just how we're feeling. So how much alcohol I drank last night, how poorly I slept, how stressed I might be with work or kids, how much I'm working out or not. All of these relational and lifestyle things get reflected in my body's nervous system. Now, one of the things I was curious about was why so many sleep trackers specifically make it a central part of their data set. Like I can usually make a direct correlation between the quality of my recovery or how well I slept and the state of my HRV. So to answer that question, I spoke to Shamal Patel, who is the head of science at Aura. And one of the things he explained is that we get the most accurate picture of our HRV during and immediately after we sleep. So we measure every single heartbeat at night. You know, most wearables of, you know, a couple of years ago even were just like, measuring snippets 
And the reason why that's important is because your physiology, the way your physiology changes when you're sleeping, gives you a really good window into your sleep and, and your recovery process. So sleep is, of course, where your body is at work repairing and restoring itself. This is where you can get a really good baseline of your physiology. Our bodies aren't usually provoked by stimuli throughout the night, at least not typically. So we have a really good chance here to capture not just a snapshot of our HRV, but a sample set that covers several hours. And we can capture that resting physiology through sensors on our fingers like Aura or devices on our wrist or even around our chest. But to get a solid picture of your HRV, you do need a device like Aura or others that are continuously capturing that data throughout the night. Of course, when I wake up and I review how I slept at night in these apps, I'm confronted with this HRV number that kind of quantifies the state or the readiness of my body. And of course, this gets me back to the original question we debated around the office. What is a good HRV? It's important to not look at it as like some absolute number that you need to index towards, but rather focus on, you know, understanding what your HRV baseline is and how that is changing. Okay, I get that this is a highly personal number, but again, how am I supposed to interpret it? I think my issue has been that I just don't quite have a reference point for what's good or what's bad. Something Marco said is actually the point. The absolute value, I would say it tells us close to nothing. This is not something that has a frame of reference. That is where much of the confusion starts, I think. And also many of the concerns of the people that read that HRV should be high and pray it's and real slow and those kind of things that we should not really obsess over these kind of things because there is really no established frame of reference. So yeah, I mean, I think the reason I've really struggled to understand this number is because there's no frame of reference. HRV can't be measured like our resting heart rate or our pulse ox. To Marco's point, we should be thinking about this number as relative to you and your own baseline. So normal is what we should be striving for, not necessarily one specific number. Or if I had to put it another way, your score and how it fluctuates is really the only score that matters. So we've talked about what this number is and what it's measuring. But again, if I open my Aura app and I see a number of 104 and that it's higher or lower relative to my baseline, the next question is, how do I improve it? Well, the answer is, it depends. <laughs> Part of what we've seen here is that everything impacts your HRV everything. So the first step to improving your HRV is to, I think, just, you know, judgment-free, take an assessment of your last 24 hours. This is where you get to start a process of self-reflection and kind of see, what did I do yesterday to earn the number that I have? You wake up and you, you think about, how did I sleep last night, right? And and I, I think there is there is something just powerful in that, just, just the act of checking in with yourself. I feel like even if you don't make any other changes, <laughs> just the act of like, in introducing this sort of check-in and, and like connecting yourself, thinking about your health, I think it's powerful. So reflect on what you ate or drank the day before. Think about how active you were. Even think about the state of your relationships. All of this directly impacts our HRV. And of course, it's also a great measure of our sleep. I would say that in general, I would always look at HIV as an overall marker. So if you know that you're not sleeping well, maybe you might be able to see it in the data. You might be able to experiment a bit in a way that maybe you try a different routine. So if you're trying to boost your HRV and improve your number relative to your baseline, here are a few tips. First, avoid alcohol. I know, but in my own experience, nothing tanks my HRV quite like a night of drinking. And I don't mean like heavy drinking, but just one or two drinks socially is enough to have a real effect on my recovery. Second, Shamal noted that for Aura users, they have a higher HRV rate when they're fasting. Now he doesn't indicate what kind of fasting you should necessarily engage in, but I do think it's a bigger sign of how important it is to be mindful of our diets and just our overall food intake, even the timing of when we eat as well. And finally, prioritize your sleep. You knew that one was coming. <laughs> While that's an easy thing to sort of recommend in theory, really do give yourself enough time to sleep. It's gonna make everything in your life just a little bit better, I promise. You're gonna be more resilient and attuned throughout the day, which can make your relationships a little bit more harmonious. And that is gonna reduce your stress levels and then increase your quality of life. Everything is connected and that's all gonna boost your HRV. It's kind of fun how that happens. The point is HRV is this holistic number that reveals far more about you than perhaps you might even understand. And since everything affects it, 
just about everything can help you improve it. So the next time you're checking your HRV, think of it less in these absolute terms. Oh, this isn't as high as some of my friends. And think about it more as a metric of personalized feedback about you and your specific lifestyle. It's your own little sleep coach tied to your finger. Of course, sleep trackers are some of the best way to capture our HRV right now. And if you're interested in some of our favorite sleep trackers, then we have an episode for you all about that right here. That's it for this one, everyone. Thank you for watching. Sleep well.